Welcome to Cloudy with a Chance of Meeples, a channel of conversation and board games. Hey, my name is Brent here on Cloudy with a Chance of Meeples. Today we are looking yet again at a top 10 list in the world of Everdell. If you follow the channel, you know my wife, Nicole, and myself, we absolutely love Everdell. And so I've been doing a whole bunch of videos my favorite forest locations, my favorite secret events or special events and cards and whatnot. So this is going to be my top 10 favorite discovery cards from the Expire, from the Spire Crest expansion, which I feel is the best expansion. I'm not gonna make a top uh, list of expansions for Everdell, or I'm not gonna rank them. Spire Crest by far is my favorite. And, and you know what, fun fact about Spire Crest, I actually backed Spirecrest and the Belfair expansion before I had the base game when this was originally on Kickstarter. And the reason was because I saw these things. On the Kickstarter page, it showed that you could get big critters in the game, these giant wooden meeples of different animals, and you could then saddle them up with the critters in Everdell. And again, at that point, I'd never played Everdell, but I was like, this. This is amazing. I got to back this, back this expansion and I'll buy the game when I get the expansion. And you know what, truth be told, I bought the game just before I got my expansion um, fulfillment. And th this is the reason I first got into Everdell. So I'm gonna go through the discovery cards that you get throughout the game. I'm gonna rank them my top 10 favorite. And I know some of them, you know, you can get these big critters in them. Some of them have uh, different locations. Some of them have just like ways to strategize, but I just wanted to show you my top 10 cards. So let's start it off with number 10, and that is Stubble Hoof. And he's actually a big critter. And you get him when you prepare for spring. So he's he'll be in the first deck. You get him and he can, um, you know, he can go on any location. And then when you prepare after that, so when you prepare for summer or prepare for autumn, you can leave him on the location to reactivate him uh, as well as draw a card and gain another resource. So you're kind of giving up a worker for the, for the next season, but you're also more importantly blocking locations. And there's some really cool locations that you can be blocking. You know, obviously if you're playing with some of the uh, other expansions, let's just say the Belfair expansion and one of the special, or one of the, um, pardon me, force locations is double reactivation of double prom production cards. If you have double hoof there and you can reactivate it again and block other people, from going there, that's just a lot of fun and a little bit mean, but I just love Stubble Hoof. I know you're kind of potentially giving up a spot or you're like, I'm gonna keep him here and not use him in spots X, Y, Z, um, but I love it. And let's be honest, like you get the, the mice, a mouse riding a, a, a moose. Come on, can't go wrong with that. So that's my number 10. Next up is the Hope Watch Trail. This one would be in the final one. And to be totally honest, I'm I'm totally blanking on the names of all these different locations. The Ridge is one. Uh, I should know these things because I've played it so much, but I'm blanking right now. But this is, uh, you know, one victory point for each uh, gained on the journey up to seven. So you have this, you put a worker on the journey for five, um, and right away that all, all of a sudden it's 10. So I think that's that's like, <laughs> pretty sweet if you're going to the journey you enjoy going to the journey you try to do that often this is like five free bonus points if you can make it uh in a five spot so that's that next up number eight we have the trail guide again he'll you, you'll get him uh first time you um change seasons trail guide when played place up to three craters beneath this card from your hand and or meadow and you may play each of them for minus two so it's kind of like an extension of your hand. You could take those cards out of the meadow where you maybe you couldn't have played them, but if you get the trail guide, you can quickly snatch them up, put them underneath your trail guide, and then you can play them for two fewer berries. I'm thinking something like, you know, the ranger, he'd be then free. The postal pigeon would be free. Um, you know, there's tons that you get a wife for free. There's just a lot of them that are only two berries. So that would be really beneficial. So trail guides. I love the trail guide. 
And speaking of berries, my next one you would get in the second time, and it is, I believe it is the ridge. I think it's the ridge. Um, the ancient orchard, come on. A place that only you can go and gain five berries? Man, you get that berry engine with the monk going, and monk and the doctor. Ah, uh, man, this is like your absolute best friend. I love the ancient orchard, and seriously, five berries. If all of a sudden you're playing with player powers, and at the same time, you're the hedgehogs, this is just absolutely a fantastic place to go, especially if you can put a guy there and then get a ranger to move him off and then put another guy on there for two, uh, two guys, 10 berries, sign me up. These next two, they kind of go hand in hand, but I will do um, this one first, the cloud song. This I guess would be uh, my number six. Am I at one, two, three, four, five? Yes, this would be my fifth one. My sixth one. I cannot count. Cloud Song. Let's just say that. <laughs> Cloud Song. Name any construction and search the deck. If you find that construction, you draw it into your hand, even if your hand is full. This would be your last uh, moving into autumn. But, you know, if you're, if you're like, man, I really need whichever construction. You're like, you're dying to find it. It's kind of a push your luck because if other people have already, you know, drawn it or discarded it, or if one's already in play and maybe someone is holding it in their hand, you don't know. It's kind of a gamble, but sometimes, you know, digging for that dungeon or digging for that, that university is, uh, is, is definitely worth it. So, and I love it that you can put it into your hand even if your hand limit is full, if you're at your hand limit. So, kind of breaks the rules in that regard. But that is the cloud song and then the one that pairs with that number five would be the bounty hunter instead of a construction it's a, it's um a critter so again if you need that you know say you have the castle you have a ton of common constructions you need that king um or you want that king because at the same time you have a lot of basic events or special events in general you have a lot of events and you want that king you can use this bounty hunter to name that king and hopefully pull him out of the deck. So he, uh, these two kind of go hand in hand, and maybe I could have put them as a sev as like a, a, a single entry in this, but I didn't. Top four, this one also it's kind of almost my favorite artwork in um, in Spirecrest. You get it at the end, and it is the Cave of Dancing Lights. I know, I, I love this artwork. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's so cute, and it's it's kind of a push your luck. It's not really a push your luck. It's kind of like, what am I going to find? I'm going to explore, what am I going to find? You reveal four cards and gain resources based on the color of cards. So depending on what cards you flip over, you get four resources, or yeah. So you get four resources, and then you can draw any of them into your hand, and then you can discard whatever you don't want. So I think that's really cool. So you could get like some, you know, maybe you really need some pebbles and resin, and you flip over a couple governance and a couple destination cards, and then you can play those governance and destination cards at the same time. Well, not at the same time, like on a future turn, but you know what I mean. So I really, I really like the Cave of Dancing Lights. I really like it, but I don't like it as much as this other big critter, and this is King Corleander. Come on, it's a little peacock, and you can claim a special or any event for half the required cost, round up if applicable. That's that's fantastic. You got the you know Everdell Games. You need two of each in your city. No, nope. with Corleander, you need one of each in your city. You could have that like on your first turn or second play in uh, in summer, and you get him. Corleander uh, in summer so you could like gobble up the Everdell games which nets you nine points which often takes someone you know halfway through summer you need two of every uh, type of card in your city but with Corleander you can uh, snatch that up pretty quick so that is absolutely amazing but there's still two left and this one man wow I love it the Mountaineer Ignore the weather effects for spring. You may play two cards in the ridge instead of one. This, when this comes out, I am like absolutely pumped. And maybe it's like, ah, oh, that's a little bit weak because you actually don't gain any cards the first time. And you get two. And if you get really bad cards and you have to spend, I should have also said, if your first one, 
they, they all flip out, so you get three a choice of three each time you prepare for season. The first one's free, second one's either a card or a resource you have to discard, or two either or cards and or resources. But this lets you ignore the weather. And in Spirecrest, if you played it enough, you know that the weather can seriously, seriously, like, destroy some of your plans. And if you get to uh, ignore the, the, the spring weather, that's like, you know, every construction costs one more resource. Like, that can be huge uh, when you're trying to still ramp up your engine in the beginning of the game. And so he lets you ignore that weather. And then you get two out of the three when you prepare for summer. And again, so if you look at my list, you know, this uh, Coriander, it's in the summer. And my next card I'm going to show you is also in the summer. Ancient Orchards is also in the summer. So, uh, so you have more chances to get some of these like super powerful cards, including my absolutely favorite discovery card. And that is Grey Cloaks Hideout. This is a private location that only you can go to and you may move one of your deployed workers here to reactivate the location that that worker was on so almost like a ranger go figure it's my favorite but seriously these two i absolutely love these gray cloaks hideout i used it in a game just recently where i had someone on my university um you know activate my university move that critter onto Great Cloaks Hideout to reactivate my university to remove another card from my city. You know, if you have if you have different critters on different um, special, uh, not special, uh, forest locations, like I said in uh, at the top of the video with Stubble Hoof, um, the forest location where you have you can activate two production cards you have a worker there then move them onto gray cloaks hideout to reactivate it again and if you know and follow the channel you know i love you know the monk activate the monk chip sweep monk again um you could have if you got the mountaineer you could have both of these so then ancient orchard for five move that critter over get another five so ten berries with one worker of course for you to get that you would have had to had the mountaineer in the first one so there is a little bit of luck involved which has happened um as many times as i played everdell i've seen it happen but great close hideout i absolutely love this one um it's just fantastic so there you have it those are my top 10 discovery cards in Everdell, the Spirecrest expansion. Let me know, what are your favorite discovery cards? Which of the big critters did I not talk about that you absolutely love? Honeypaw, King Rune, Windlore, maybe Whisper. What are they? Let me know in the comments below. Check us out on Facebook, Cloudy with the Chance Meeples. Till next time, my name is Brent. Grab your umbrella, the forecast is Cloudy with the Chance Meeples. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and remember to grab your umbrella because the forecast is cloudy with a chance of meeples.